right. All right, that's fine. Just make sure that you're back in time for supper. And if you should happen to come upon a certain someone in your travels, you two are not to be alone together. Do you... <sighs> All right. I know that you know. Oh, go and have fun. <laughs> My son, he's such a good boy. He was totally normal until he fell in love with a girl named Tamara. Now, who knows? Sometimes I am tempted to discourage him, but then my husband reminds me, it is time for us to be thinking about marriage for him. I'm just not sure I'm ready to let him go. You see, he's my youngest, my baby, the last one that I have at home. Then again, he is driving me crazy <laughs> with Tamara this and Tamara that. It's so hard for me to watch him follow her around like a little lost puppy dog and <laughs> not laugh. <laughs> oh, but I remember when I was his age. And I must admit, I did my share of following the boys around. <laughs> However, I'm sure I never looked that silly. <laughs> or did I? <laughs> It's funny, the things love can drive you to do. Or should I say the things lack of love will drive you to do? Either way, the search for love can be heartbreaking at times. Trust me, I know. Oh, here comes my little darling, my granddaughter. Oh, you are so cute. Uh, what am I doing? Well. I'm talking to some nice people. What are you doing? Well, well, yes. Yes, grandmother would love to see what you have in your little sack there. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Close my eyes and hold out my hands. Ooh, I have a feeling I'm in trouble. Uh-huh, yes, I'm ready. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, 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 get him! Th th there he goes, dear. Uh, wait, uh, what? Yes! Yes, I am very proud of you. Yes, lizards are very hard to catch, as demonstrated right now. Okay, let's, oh, here he comes, here he comes. Yep, nope, there he goes up here. That, oh, grandmother will help you. I, I've got him. Uh-huh. <gasps> oh. oh, no, dear. He's not dead. He's just a bit... Stunned is all. Uh, why don't you pick him up? It's easier to put him back in your. There, there you go. Oh, he's starting to wiggle. Put him, put him back. There you go. Um, why don't you just run along and show grandfather your lizard? Isn't that a wonderful idea? There, there you go. Um, bye bye. I, I love you too. Bye bye. Now, as we were saying, yes, dear. Mm hmm. Oh, your lizard is lonely. Hmm. Well, maybe you can catch another lizard and then you'll have, oh, your mother would kill me. Um, I have a wonderful and even better idea. Why don't you leave your lizard with grandmother and we'll cook him for dinner? Whoop, there we go. That worked. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, grandmothers are so smart, aren't they? Now, where were we? Oh, yes. We were talking about love. As you can see, I am completely surrounded by love. I have beautiful grandchildren and children. I have a lovely home. I have a great husband. People who meet me for the first time think I have it all together. When they tell me of their struggles and trials, and I say I understand, they laugh at me. They say, ha! Huh? What do you know of heartache and pain? Look at your life. It's perfect. Well, all right. Let's look at my life. I'm sorry I'm hesitating. It's just, I would rather not look at my life. Well, now, that's not totally true either. I love looking at my present life. You don't know how much I want to walk away right now and let you remember me as a dedicated wife and loving mother. And all you'll ever know of me is that I'm someone who has it all together. 
but that wouldn't be right, and it certainly wouldn't be true. Still, others of you may think, what's the point? Why bother bringing up the past? All that matters is where you are today. And yes, in a way, that's true. I do not bring up the past to condemn myself. Oh, God knows I've spent way too much time doing that. But rather, to remember with a grateful heart all that God has brought me through. I find that keeps me from taking my present life for granted. And yes, there is a much bigger reason why I feel the need to tell my story. Although I could selfishly keep quiet about my past, it's so much easier to do that. Yet I cannot ignore this burning in my heart to tell others my story and that once I was so lost in my sin. I thought there was no hope for me. I had strayed so far away from my home, from all that I loved. I thought there was no way I could ever return. So what if there is someone out there right now, just like me, who doesn't understand forgiveness? What if there is a broken heart or a shattered life that feels they are completely alone in what they're going through? Well, you're not alone. I've been there too, and it's for you I tell my story because God has put such a love in my heart for you. And what's more, God himself loves you more than you will ever, ever know. And he has sent me here to tell you that there is always a way back home. boys. You, you better stop throwing rocks at us or I'll tell. <gasps> Hannah, what are you doing? You don't throw the rocks back at them because <sighs> they'll think we like them. <sighs> yeah, my mommy says boys are only mean to the girls they like. Yeah, that is pretty dumb. <laughs> oh, oh, I know, I know, you're throwing the rocks back because you like Abner. You like Abner. Ew, gross. I do not like Hosea. I don't like any boys, especially not Hosea. I wouldn't marry Hosea if, if, if he were the last boy in the whole wide world. Anyway. If I ever do like boys, which I doubt, I am going to marry a handsome king, and, and he's going to take me away to live with him in a big, beautiful palace, and he'll love me forever and ever and buy me lots of stuff. <laughs> and he's going to have a really pretty horse. I love horses. <laughs> and, and you can come too, Hannah, because you're my very best friend. Mm-hmm, yep, you get your own horse, and, um, and, um, you get your own king, too. <laughs> Let's just never mind those silly boys. Let's just always stay best friends. I'll always love you. You'll always love me. Together, forever, best friends will be. Okay, Hannah. Hannah, they are right over there. How do I look? 
<laughs> is there anything in my teeth? <laughs> yes, you look beautiful, you always do. <gasps> Abner is there. He is so gorgeous. <gasps> he looked at me. I am so serious. He like totally looked at me. <gasps> I'm dying. Okay, wait a minute. I have an idea. Why don't we just walk a little bit over there and, and we can get a better view and like they can get a better view and we'll pretend we are like so totally not interested. <laughs> Okay, mm, we're walking, we're walking. Okay, okay, Hannah, stand right there. Okay, now, when I give you this, no, don't look yet, pay attention. Okay, when I give you the signal, you turn around and tell me if Abner's looking at me, and then, oh, you look too soon, and now he totally knows I like him. What do you mean he wasn't looking anyway? Oh, whatever. Was Eli looking? Was Joseph looking? Was like anyone looking? Oh, ooh, Hosea. Ugh, figures. The only one I don't want to notice me. Because he is always looking at me, it is so totally creepy. What? He's coming over here this way now? Oh, whatever. Ooh, geek alert. I don't know, I just, I don't like him. He's always got his nose stuck in a scroll, probably thinks he's smarter than everyone. And <sighs> Hi, Hosea. I'm fine, at least I was fine. No, no, Hosea, no, I wouldn't like that at all. It's just, it's not a good idea. What do you mean you already talked to my father? Okay, um, like, I just don't feel that way about you. <laughs> oh, trust me, it will so not matter how much time passes, Hosea. I will never come to love you. I don't even like you. Now, would you please just go away? You're like blocking my view. What? Oh, I was so not mean to him. Oh, yeah, so he's shy. So what? So I'm supposed to be nice to him because he's afraid to talk to people? What do you mean he could be right? What? Love doesn't grow on you. What is it, like some kind of fungus or something? No. And love is either there or it's not, you know? Love is that little feeling like you've got butterflies in your stomach and, and your palms are sweating and you melt at the sound of his voice. <laughs> Love is dreaming of the day he kisses you. <laughs> Love makes you crazy, but it makes you feel alive and I, and I can't live without that kind of fun and excitement in my life. That's why I cannot marry Hosea. <laughs> oh, Hannah. Remember when we were little girls and, and we used to dream that we would marry handsome kings and they would love us forever and we live in palaces right next to each other? Whoa, 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 whoa. where are you going? Wh what? No, no, you, no, tell me now, I want to know now. <gasps> Your parents want you to marry who? Hannah, how can you be so happy about this? You don't even know this guy. What do you mean happiness is a choice, love is a choice? Okay, whatever. I'm so glad that works for you, but it's not what I want for my life. If my parents make me marry someone that I don't love, I'll, I'll, I'll run away. I promise you I will. Oh, yes, I'm sure I know what real love is. I just told you what it was. It's butterflies and sweaty palms. And you know, I'll tell you one other thing too. And that is no one's gonna tell me what to do. Not you, not my parents, not God, not anyone. You and all your obedience. You know what that is? It's weakness. Well, I'm not weak. And they're my dreams and I can make them happen for myself, thank you. My attitude, I do not have an attitude. 
And you know what, Hannah, you used to be my very best friend, the only one who understands me. And you know what, you sound just like my parents. Well, I don't need you, and I don't need them, and, and I don't need anyone. Because all I'm really asking, Hannah, is for someone to love me. I just, I want someone to really, truly love me for who I am. Is that so wrong? Is that so bad? I just want to be loved. I just want to be loved. Thanks for the bracelet, sweetie. But next time, I want the cash. <laughs> oh, don't fool yourself. There's always a next time. At least for me. Thanks for the bracelet. Thanks for the earrings. Who cares? As long as they pay. <gasps> Gee. Such nice, sparkly jewelry. What more could a girl want? <laughs> now there's a word for you, want. Because you see, it's not about what I want anymore. It's about what just is. When you live the kind of life I live, you don't allow yourself to think about what you want. Because what you want can never be. Cynical? Yeah. Negative? You bet. But what do you want from me? You who sit there in the judgment seat with looks of pity on your face. I'd rather you judge me harshly, call me a name, turn away in disgust, even spit on me if you want to. That I can take. But it's that sad, pitying looks on your faces that I can't stand. Oh, what could have happened to poor Gomer? She had so much promise. And you know, that's a real good question as to what happened to poor Gomer. And if any of you has the answer, please feel free to enlighten me. Because I have no idea where I went wrong in my life. All right. When I was younger, I was a lot of big talk. But deep down, I wanted to do what was right. I wanted to be a good girl and please my parents and honor God. And when I got married, I actually wanted to be a good wife. <laughs> Imagine that. Well, looking back on it now, maybe I made a few mistakes. Maybe I was haughty and full of myself. Maybe I was being hard on the man I married because, you see, he wasn't fitting into my dream. I have this dream of being loved and adored, and he didn't make me feel loved. So I lashed out a few times. So what? 
All right, I was difficult to live with. But at least I was trying. And then one day, after only a few months of marriage, he put me away, just like that. No, let's sit down and talk about this, no second chances. Just one day I wake up and I'm no longer married. Everything I ever thought I was or could become was gone. It was like my whole life was just ripped out from under me and there was nothing I could do about it. You see, in my society, a woman has no rights. I had no options. I suppose I could have gone back and begged my family to take me in. But you see, there the problem was, they actually let me marry the man I wanted to marry and not the one they'd chosen for me. I threatened to run away. <laughs> How ironic is that? And you know what? I wasn't going to go back in here. I told you so. And you know what? I don't look to people to help me. Life has taught me the hard way that people will hurt you. People will let you down. And not just people either. Oh no. God too. Oh yeah, God. If he is up there, he doesn't care about me. He doesn't care about my dreams. He never heard a single prayer. Oh, yeah, because that's what I would pray for hours when I was a little girl. Please, God, I want to be a prostitute when I grow up. <laughs> Come on. Who prays that? No. Dreams are for idiots. And as far as I'm concerned, love doesn't exist. When you live in the real world, Life is hard enough. The illusion of love only complicates things. I have found that the only way to survive in this world is you keep focused on yourself. And whatever you do, never look back. And most importantly, never ever let yourself think about what might have been. <sighs> oh. Well, you look who it is, Hosea. I remember when I used to laugh at him when I was a little girl. But look at him now. Well, still not tall, dark, and handsome or anything, but, the, but there's something about him, something strong and confident and, and so warm. So much like home. Um, well, I, uh, I've heard that he's done quite well for himself. I overheard the women in the marketplace say he's the finest catch in town. They say he's a man of God, a prophet even. In all these years, he's never married, but rumor has it he's about to choose a wife. <laughs> I just hope whoever he marries... knows how lucky she is. Oh, Hosea, all those times in my childhood when you looked at me, what I wouldn't give for you to look at me now. What? What am I saying? How foolish I am to think that a man of God would ever look in my direction. No honorable man would be caught speaking to a prostitute in public. And even if he did look at me, it would only make me even more ashamed of what I've become. And I, and I couldn't stand that look of pity and disgust in his eyes. No, no, not from him. But even though I turn away, even though I hide myself from him, it's as though I feel his presence all around me, beckoning me, calling me from somewhere deep inside my soul. Yet, I have no soul. I have no heart. Life has stolen them away, and even though I crave the darkness now, there is still a part of me that yearns for the light of his love. Oh, but don't you see? 
Don't you see that is the cruelty? How dare he rekindle that which I have sought to bury? I have crushed those dreams of love and buried them amidst the many other broken things of my life. My dreams are buried in a heap of sin. My dreams are dead. I can only wish the same for myself. If only I could believe for just one moment that there may be a way out of this misery. But I am what I am. And nothing can change that. Not even Hosea. Oh, oh, Hosea, Hosea, what are you, what are you doing here? You, you, you shouldn't be here. A, a, a man like you shouldn't be here. You, you, you need to go away, go far, far away. Don't talk to me. Don't even look at me. Don't. What did you say? Uh, what do you mean, nice to see nothing's changed? Oh, Hosea, everything has changed. Everything. Oh, I, I, I don't say those kinds of things to hurt your feelings anymore. I, I say them for your own good. I mean, a man like you shouldn't be here. I, I mean, people are watching. Look at all the people, and, and they talk, you know, and I've, I've heard that you're soon to be married. I mean, don't, don't you know what I am? Well, you should care. I, I, I mean, what if, what if these people tell that your wife, that, 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 you're, that you're talking to a prostitute and your wife finds out, wait, huh? Your wife knows that you're, that she, what? <gasps> you didn't bring her here, did you? <gasps> nice lady, you shouldn't be here, Hosea. We need to go and find her and just, just take her away from here. I mean, I mean, don't, a noble woman, this is no place for her. So please, please, Hosea, listen to me. Go to your wife and take her away from here. What do you mean you're trying to? <gasps> no, Hosea, you must not touch me. I'm unclean. I'm unclean. Oh, how can this be? He still wants to marry me. Of all people, I, I, I am now the most unlikely, aren't I? I? I am unwanted. I am unlovable. I am unforgivable. <gasps> is it possible that, that there is a love so strong, so powerful, that it could overlook such a shameful past as mine? Oh, how I want to believe that such a love exists. But I don't know if I can open my heart again to love again, I, even for this trustworthy man. Hmm. Oh, but look at him. <laughs> he's on his knees and all, and I mean, he seems so sincere, doesn't he? Wait a minute. How do I know he's sincere, huh? How, how do I know this isn't some sort of trick, a trap? An illusion. Oh, uh, maybe Hosea just, just wants me to, to marry him just so he can, he can hurt me. He wants, me he, he wants to punish me for all those years that I have rejected him. And, and why should I believe that his love can be different from the other men I've known? No. no. Hmm. You know what? I don't need him. I'm doing quite well taking care of myself. Thank you. I have a roof over my head. I have enough to eat. I have clothes on my back, quite nice ones, I might add. What need do I have of a um, savior? Come on, does he think I'm so poor, so wretched, that he can just come sweeping in here with his big dreams and like it's my big dream or something? It was my dream once but it hurts too much to dream now. Oh, maybe what I'm really, truly afraid of is that I can never be what he wants me to be. He deserves a wife that's pure and faithful, 
pure in heart, pure in mind, pure in body. I can never give him that. But wait a minute. He knows this. He knows what I am. And still, he desires me. Does he think that just by loving me, I can become pure? By loving me, I can become faithful? If a love that beautiful and that transforming exists, oh, how I want to find it. Huh? What? Oh, oh, yes, yes, you, 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 uh, yes, I'm going to, to answer you. Of course I am. You've been on your knees a long time. It's just, I'm sorry, I was completely lost in my thoughts there for a while. I, but, um, Jose, if you would just stand up, it'd be so much easier. If you could, there, there you go. Okay. Um, yes, 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 I will marry you, Hosea. <laughs> so strange. Okay, listen, um, I'm just going to get my things and we'll be on our way to your castle, my king. Oh, I know you don't actually have a castle. It's from when I was little. Oh, never mind. I'm going to... Oh, but, 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 but they're my things, Jose. I want to take them with me. Oh, yes. Yes, of course, I believe you when you promise me a new life. Oh. Oh, yeah, you're absolutely right. I, no, no, I, I don't need any reminders of who I was. <laughs> oh, that is so beautiful. Behold, all things have become new. That's a good one. But, um, excuse me, you do have a horse, though. You have a horse. <laughs> oh, donkeys are good, too. in the early hours of the morning. I just love being the first one to make a sound. <laughs> it's almost like all creation is just waiting for me to speak before it comes alive. <laughs> I love that. Mm, do you smell that? It's the smell of springtime. <laughs> it's not even really here yet, but I can sense it coming. <sighs> to smell the smell of new beginnings. <laughs> it's just so, so wonderful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll bet all this chipperness in the morning's got to be making you sick. It's okay, I completely understand. I'm so happy lately, I'm making myself sick. <laughs> I used to think that people who were cheery and talkative early in the morning were so annoying. Da, 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 da. Don't you just want to slap them? <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just that it's been so long since I've seen a sunrise, you know. Up until recently, all I'd seen was the darkness. And the sunrise was when I was finally able to get some sleep. Oh, I've forgotten how beautiful they are. I never even realized how much I was missing in my life until I married Hosea. A and the sunrise is just one small part of the beauty that he's brought into my life. 
and just one of the many, many changes. It's only been a few months since we've been married, but it already seems as though my former life never even existed, like it was all some kind of crazy, horrible nightmare, and then I woke up to my real life with Hosea, the life I was meant to live, and the life I love. I'm so grateful to Hosea for all he's done for me. He's taken away all of my darkness, all of my pain, all of my sorrow, and given me light and, and joy and, and hope. Oh, such a hope for the future. You know, I used to dread mornings. I dreaded the thought of facing another day. But now I wake up and I smile because he is with me. And for the first time since I was a little girl, I feel safe. <laughs> but really, the best part about being married to Hosea is who I am. I hated who I was and what I had become. I couldn't even stand to look at myself. But now, I realize that the beauty of his love is within me. And that's what makes me, well, beautiful. I mean, if, if Hosea loves me this much, I must be worth something, right? As each day passes and the more time I spend with Hosea, I see how very, very special he is. I care about him more with each passing day. That's why it kind of bothers me when I get certain thoughts in my head for as far away as my former life seems to be. There are other times when it's like my past is right at my heels, nipping at me like some kind of rabid dog. The dog is ugly and vicious. Its saliva is full of sin and death, and in its eyes are memories and lies, and I'm, and I'm terrified that it's going to get me. So I run. I run right to Hosea, and he helps me to come to terms with the thoughts of my past. He just holds me, and he listens to me, and he never condemns me. He just reminds me who I am now and that I have nothing to fear because he is with me no matter what. But then there are other times when I think about my past and those thoughts come to me more like cute little puppy dogs. <laughs> so inviting and harmless. <gasps> See? Oh, he's friendly. He won't hurt me. Oh, he wants me to come and follow him and play just for a little while. Nothing bad will happen. And that's when I want to go back. Back to where I was when Hosea found me. <laughs> Although... Not permanently, like I said, just for a little while. It wasn't all such a bad life, was it? <laughs> I actually made a few friends over the last couple of years, and I just want to go back and see how they're doing. <sighs> okay, you got me. I want to go back for them to see me. <laughs> Not just to show off, although that's part of it, but, but their lives are are so full of sin and, and sadness and despair. And, and, and if they see me, then, then the, that will give them hope that dreams really do come true. That's what I'll do. It's exactly what I'll do. I'll go back and I'll help people. Of course, I can't tell Hosea where I'm going. Well, th that would only make him worry, and really there's nothing to worry about. I would never hurt Hosea. I would be a fool to throw away the beautiful life that I have now. When I married Hosea, I pledged my faithfulness and obedience to him, and I meant what I said. And besides, I'm strong now. I am strong enough 
to go back into that former environment and not be affected by it. Hmm. Oh, I should probably ask permission first, though, huh? <laughs> ask permission? I haven't asked permission from anyone for anything in a long, long time, and I'm not about to start now, especially not over something as small and insignificant as this. And besides, what he doesn't know won't hurt him. He's going out of town the day after tomorrow, and I can be there and back before he even knows I went anywhere. <laughs> it's a perfect plan. Now, don't look so concerned. I know what I'm doing. I'm a big girl. I can take care of myself. Besides, what could possibly happen? ever sleep again. <laughs> you know what one of the hardest things about all that is? Just after you finally get the baby back to sleep, tiptoe quietly out of the room, and just as you're about to fall back asleep yourself, you hear next to you, Ugh. I am sure Eve never had to deal with that before the fall. Well, I guess the only good part about me not being able to sleep is it gives us a chance to catch up. Oh, it's been so long since we've talked. I hardly know where to begin. Oh, yes. I remember being in very grave danger last time you saw me. Of course, I didn't think I was how naive I was, thinking I could go back into my former environment and not be affected by it. I can't believe how quickly I just became my old self. <laughs> I guess I still was my old self. You know, when I went back and fell into that same old sin, I just contemplated staying there and accepting the fact that all I'd ever be was a sinful prostitute. But even through the ugliness of my sin, I had the most incredible sense of Hosea's love for me. And that's what drew me home. Of course, when I went home, I tried to pretend like nothing ever happened. I tried to hide what I had done. But he knew, ooh, somehow he knew. I hated him for that. Truth is, I hated myself. My guilt had put such a distance between us. It was suffocating me. Pretending you're something you're not is a horrible way to live. And just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, they did. For I realized I was pregnant. Something I longed for all my life was happening, but because of my sin, I had allowed the, the joy of that event to be taken from me. 
You see, I just wish so much that I could have been sure that the baby was his. But I couldn't be sure. The only thing I was sure of is that I couldn't take it one more second without telling him. And so I tried to, tried to play the scene over and over in my head, trying to think how he would react. God knows he had every right to hate me. He had every right to cast me out like a dog in the street. And, and part of me actually wanted him to because I knew, I knew in my heart, that's where I belong. But you know what he did when I finally told him? Oh, I, he, was just, he was just so quiet for such a long time, and I just sat there holding my breath, waiting for him to pronounce judgment, because I knew under the law I deserved death. But after what seemed like an eternity, he knelt down in front of me, and wiping my tears away, he said, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with loving kindness. I have betrothed you to me forever. You are forgiven. excited. Oh, it was like the weight of the world was lifted off my shoulders. It was joy like I have never felt in my life. <laughs> Trust me, I danced that day. <laughs> and I just remember saying to him, oh, thank you, Hosea. Thank you. Thank you for loving me when I don't deserve it. Thank you for extending me mercy. Oh, Jose, I promise, I promise you I will never hurt you again. I will never, ever hurt you. Do you know how many times I ended up saying those words to him? And, and, and I don't even know why I kept going back to my sin. Was, was it habit? Was it selfishness? Was it ignorance? I, I guess I didn't understand how much I was hurting him. And I know I definitely didn't understand how much he loved me. But then one day it hit me. He loved me. He loved me. And, and I wanted to be worthy of that kind of love. And, and so, so it's just, I, I don't know what happened. I mean, something happened. I changed. <laughs> I changed. I guess I really, truly have changed. <laughs> oh, and, and speaking of changes, <laughs> isn't it amazing how much having a baby can change your life. Huh. Don't laugh, but I actually thought motherhood was going to be easy. <laughs> After all I'd been through in my life, I thought, I'm tough enough for anything. <laughs> all right, I admit, I was a little apprehensive about the labor part. I mean, I'd seen enough babies born to know there's a fair amount of discomfort going on there. <laughs> well, <laughs> as it turns out, that was a lot easier to deal with, what happened to my body than what happened to my heart. I just, I had a really hard time when I had my first child. All the other mothers, they were so happy, and I would watch them with their children, and they were smiling and joyful, and, and I wasn't. I'm mean, just sitting there looking at this, this little creature screaming at me and thinking, who are you? <laughs> What have I gotten myself into? Well, as the months went by, I learned how to take care of my child. But I still didn't feel like I loved him as I should. I felt so guilty. And then one day I realized I did love him. But I was so afraid. I loved him so much that it shook me with fear to the very core of my being. 
I, I hated being that vulnerable. All those walls, those years and years that I had spent building up those walls around my heart to protect myself from being hurt, it's like they just crumbled into a thousand pieces the day I had a child. And, and to this day, three kids later, it still terrifies me to love this much. Because I know, looking at that precious little innocent face, the only way anyone will ever hurt me again is to hurt that child. But I will never let that happen. No, I, I, I know I may not be able to shelter them forever. But there is a vow I made to myself and to God above on the day they each were born. And that is that they will never know the kind of life I lived. They will never suffer in sin the way I suffered in sin. They will not follow in my footsteps, no. They will follow after the path of righteousness the way their father has. I mean, the way Hosea has. <laughs> I love watching Hosea with the kids. He couldn't love them more if they were... Well, the point is, I just don't want them to turn out like me. You know what? Um, I, I, I really should get going. I mean, the sun is almost up and there's just so much to do. There's just so incredibly much to do. You know, I, I try to get up a little earlier each day just to try to get some things done before the kids awake, and it's like never enough time in my day to do all the things that, that, that I need to get done. I mean, oh, hey, here's a good idea. Why doesn't mom just try not going to bed at all? Huh? Would that work for everyone? <laughs> it feels like I work nonstop. Maybe I should just do it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, it sounds like I'm complaining, and I'm, I don't mean to complain, I, I really don't. After all, this is, this is what I wanted for my life, right? To be a wife and mother, and watching my children grow and, and, and be healthy and, and happy and strong, well, that, that should be enough thanks for all I do. Here's a good one. Children are a reward from the Lord, which makes me just want to scream sometimes. What about me, huh? What about a little time for myself? All day long, I've got duties and responsibilities and people pulling at me. Mommy, mommy, I never get to go where I want to go, and I never get to do what I want to do. It's like no one even cares about my needs. No one even sees me anymore. I've lost myself. I just, uh, I just need something, you know. I, uh, I need to feel appreciated. Uh, come on, would it kill anyone to say thank you once in a while? And I need to feel like my life has meaning and purpose. And, and I need to feel loved. Oh, don't get me wrong, Hosea is a great husband. But it was different in the beginning. It's like I was getting more attention when I was straying away. I used to be pretty. Did you know that? <laughs> I know it's hard to picture this now, but um, there was a time when I could turn a lot of heads. Now the only time I turn anyone's head is when I walk by with food. <laughs> but I think about the days. I was beautiful, and when I had 
beautiful, sparkling jewelry and lovely, expensive clothing. <laughs> Look at me now. <laughs> I need something. I need to feel happy. And I don't know. I don't know what to do to feel happy anymore. Oh, God help me. I don't know anything anymore. Oh, no. I can't take this anymore. I can't take it anymore. I can't do it. I just can't do it. Please help me. How could I do this? I promised. I promised. I promised myself. I promised my husband that I would change. And I thought I did change. I thought I did. After all this time, after all he's done for me, after all the love he's given to me, he believed in me. And now I've gone and thrown it all away by hurting him once again. How can I do this? <sighs> okay, think, 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 Gomer. Think you have gotten out of everything you can get out of this one. God, you have to help me. God, please, please roll back the hands of time and give me another chance. Please, please, you have to give me, you have to give me just one more chance. but I have used up all my chances. It was one thing when I didn't know any better. And time and time again, he took me back. But not this time. Not after all this time that I have known him and and lived with him and loved him. Or at least pretended to love him. For how could I love him and sin against him in the same breath? I have wiped away our entire future. I know. 
I know Hosea has forgiven me time and time again, but don't you see the differences? This time I knew. I knew what the consequences would be. I, I, I knew what I would be losing, and I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose. What is wrong? Why do I keep doing this? It's got to stop. <laughs> oh, Hosea. Even you had me believing that I could truly change. <laughs> it was a nice dream. But that's all it was. The truth is, I am what I am, and I am a hypocrite. <laughs> I'm a big fake. And I can't go on pretending I'm a godly woman when I know the evil that lies in my heart. I can't keep doing this to my family. I have broken my marriage vows. And there is nothing, nothing I could ever do to make it right again. But there is a vow. That I intend to keep. even if it means my death. My precious children, I promised that I would always love you and always protect you. And I hope that you know what I do now, I do out of love and that I am protecting you. I'm protecting you from me. I'm so afraid that you're going to turn out like me. So I have to go away. But I want you to know how much I love you and that I will think about you every single day of my life and that I will always be your mother. I just, I just pray that someday, somehow, you will find it in your hearts to forgive me. But I know there is no more forgiveness. Not for me. Not this time.
Look at that sorry wretch! <laughs> you couldn't even give her away! <laughs> The right, no one will want me. The laughter, the insults, it means nothing to me, for I am already dead. It is sin that has brought me to this place. It is sin that chains me to this auction block. And it is sin that has brought me death. In these final moments, I have clear thought and one realization. In all the years I knew Hosea, all I ever cared about was what he could do for me. I was consumed with myself. If ever my selfish needs were not met, I strayed away. I only loved him when he was making me feel good about myself. It is only now, now that we are separated forever, that I finally realize it was never about what he could do, but only about who he was. And I couldn't even see who he was until I got myself out of the way. But now I see him. I see his beauty. I see his kindness. And I would give anything just to see him one more time. And hear the sound of his laughter and see a smile. But if I could just say one thing, I would say, I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. And that I love, I love him. I really love him. I know I love him because, because if he took it all away, if Hosea took everything that ever meant anything to me, if he took my very life, I would still love him because he is worthy. He is worthy and deserving of all my love. But Hosea didn't take my life away. Sin did. By my own choices, I am here on this auction block, being mocked and spit on by the crowd. In my ears, the auctioneer is shouting, who will start the bidding for this broken, dirty wretch? The only answer is laughter from the crowd. It feels like an eternity until a voice calls from the distance. Fifteen pieces of silver. The voice, however, faint sends a shiver through my soul. For I know that voice. Fifteen pieces of silver. The voice is, is getting louder, coming through the crowd, and suddenly the crowd parts. Is that you? <laughs> and then I hear 15 pieces of silver is far too small a price for my beautiful wife. <laughs> I'll buy her with my life. And suddenly the chains that bind my hands and heart are loosed forever. And for the first time in my life, the words he says make sense to me. I finally realize I am his beautiful wife. I am a pure and spotless bride. 
and not because of anything I did or ever could do, but only because of his incredible, redeeming love can I ever be forgiven. And I know the truth is, when I look into his eyes, there never was anything I could ever do to make him stop loving me. He searched for me. He found me, and he bought me back. <laughs> he never gave up on me. Because you knew, didn't you? You knew all along <laughs> that one day I would love you. You knew the whole time that one day I would truly be yours. Take me home. <laughs> Take me home. <laughs> oh, I want to go home. <laughs> Thank you, God, that I still have a home. For you are my home, Lord. You are my home. Where is my Hosea? Where is my Hosea? Where is my Hosea? Where is my Hosea? That is a great story. But what about right here, right now, today? Who would buy me back from my auction block? Who can take my sin away? Who could ever love me that much? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16 This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. 1 John 3.16 Fifteen pieces of silver is far too small a price for my beautiful wife. I'll buy her with my life. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Mark 10.45 completely loved and love completed I love you I love you I love you Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You could be seated for a moment. I just want to thank you all so much, my home, my home church. Oh, what a glorious, wonderful time to be with you. And I just pray that you have felt the presence of the Lord just wrap around you and hold you tight. I did want to share very quickly at the end that this is not, if you haven't figured it out by the way that I portray it, it is not just a script I picked up. This is my life. I am Gomer. I have lived it. I was saved at about 12 or 13, received the Lord as my savior, and, and I went to Bible college, and I was, I was wanting to go into the ministry, and, and then I won't go into it, but something happened in my life and I was so angry at God for allowing that to happen. And I just walked away from church. My Christian friends, I walked away from my Lord for seven years. I went back into sin and lived a very, very sinful life. And one day out of nowhere, the presence 
of Jesus Christ himself just came into my bedroom when I was alone after a particularly evil day. And I, I just out loud said, Lord, please, you shouldn't be here. Maybe once when I was a good girl, maybe once when I was in Bible college, but not now, not after all that I have done. And instead of leaving, his presence leaving me, it's the only time in my life I ever felt the Lord wrap his arms around me and hold me. And not audibly, but in my heart, I heard, he just whispered, you are my beautiful bride. How can you still call me that? And I out loud told him, go, go, but he wouldn't. And that love just got stronger and stronger until I just knelt at my bed. And in a pool of tears, I said, Lord, if you'll take me back, I promise you that I will use my gifts and talents to tell others that there is always a way back home. And that's exactly what I've done. I love him. After all I've done, he pursued me with an unrelenting love like he's pursuing you right now. And I'm going to have Pastor Greg come up here, but just a prayer away, a breath away, if you've not committed your life to Jesus Christ. He has been waiting for you for so long. And for those who have known and walked away like I did, He's just standing there, holding his arms out. I know it. So it doesn't have to be a big fancy thing, you know? Just in your seat right now. How can you walk away from this love? How can you walk away? Don't walk away. That's all I can, can't make you do anything, but please don't walk away tonight. He loves you. He loves you, and I love you, so thank you. I'm going to have Greg come up, so.